Okay. So let's uh, look at this. Air uh, is uh, initially at 300 Kelvin and 200 kPa. It's heated at a constant pressure to 600 Kelvin uh, constant pressure. So then it's at uh, all still at 200 kPa. Determine the change in internal energy of air per unit mass. So uh, in general, in general, constant pressure, I'm thinking CP, uh, but it, if it asks for internal, if it asks for you, the only way we can find you, that, that's the CV. So anyway, we're going to use CV. So this is kind of tricky. Even though it, it says constant pressure right here, um, th the thing to think about here is CV is for U and CP is for H. This one is asking for U. Why it's asking for U, I don't know. But it's asking for U. So um, if we use specific heats, then um, we would do C, V, delta T, but we'll get there uh, in a minute. Okay, so first of all, could we find it from the air table tape, table A17? So uh, we haven't used these tables before, but if we go to our property tables, go for table A17, and let's state one is at a temperature of 300 Kelvin, a pressure of 200 kPa. State two is at... A temperature of 600 K, a pressure still of 200 kPa. Go to these tables, you'll see that these tables, 17, 18, 19, they're just organized by temperature. Temperature is the main factor for the properties for these ideal gases. So for, at this temperature, there's its U value, you know, the, or there's its H value if that was what we were looking for. We're looking for the U at a temperature of 600 Kelvin. So let's go uh, to, oh, oh, yeah, sorry. I, I was looking down here, but then it starts over right here. So a temperature of 600 Kelvin, be careful. If you're in Celsius, make sure uh, this one is in Kelvin. Some of the other property tables are in Celsius. What we're looking for, we're looking for an H. An H 434.78. Sorry, this was uh, U2, right, T2. 600 Kelvin. My U2 is 434.78. Uh, sorry, T1 was 300. So my U1, 300 U value, 214.07. 214.07. So the change in internal energy, U2 minus U1, those values right there. So from table... A17, U1 was 214.07 kilojoules per kilogram. Uh, U2 was 434.78 kilojoules per kilogram. So the delta U, whoop, that's what it was asking for. Delta U, that minus that. 220.71 kilojoules per kilogram. That was using part A. All right, but using method B, the functional form in table A to C, the functional form, table A to C. So we'll go to table A to C for air, uh, and we will use that equation, use that value, all right, so let's go to that table, A2, all right, this table right here, for air, which we, we kind of been looking at this uh, in the previous video, so there's airs, there's an equation that this value with no T, this value, times t, this value, times t squared, plus this value, times t cubed. Um, it's good at that temperature range. Then we'll have to integrate that. All right, so let's uh, go back to our notes. For air, table A to C. C P bar was 28.11 plus 0.1967 times 10 to the negative 2 T 
plus 0 0.4802 times 10 to the negative 5 t squared minus 1.966 times 10 to the negative, uh, was it 9 uh, t cubed. All right, but that CP, uh, if I want U or a change in U, then I want CV dt. So this is going to give me U bar. Uh, how do I change CV or CP to CV? I just subtract the universal gas constant 8.3144. So, so I really want to take an integral of, let's see, 28 point, that minus 8.314, of 19.796, and then these, I'm going to copy these, duplicate that right there, dt. So I'm taking the integral of that with respect to t. The integral of that is going to give me delta u bar. Uh, and so this would be 19.796t.91967 times 10 to the negative 2 t squared over 2 plus 0 0.4802 times 10 to the negative 5 t cubed over 3. 1.966 times 10 to the negative 9 t 4 over 4. And I'm going to plug in 600... And I'm going to plug in 300. I'm going to plug in 600 here, 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 here. And I'm going to subtract, plugging in 300 here, here, here. A lot of math to get delta U bar 6447 kilojoules per kilomole. Uh, but if I want delta U, then I would take this and divide it by... 1 over the molar mass. Let me, let me kind of show you. That's, that's U bar. That's U bar. Uh, and I know that U is U bar over M. And M of air from table A1 is 28.97 kilogram per kilomole. All right, 28.97 kilogram per kilomole. I need another page here. So delta U would be 6447 divided by 28.97, 222.5 kilojoules per kilogram equals delta U. All that math and pretty close to 220, I'm 222.5 kilojoules per kilogram. Okay, was that worth it? Was all that math worth getting it, I don't know, close to accurate? Well, let's see. Let's use the average or the constant specific heat from table A to B. Table A to B. All right, so part C. Um, table A to B for air. Property tables. Table A to B. I'm looking at air. Um, I'm going from 300 Kelvin to 600 Kelvin. Should I use this air value, uh, this 0.718? Should I use 0.764? Or should I use the value at 450? Let me just do that. Let me use the value at 450. Use the value at 450. 0.733 is CV right there. Okay, so delta U is CV delta T. Delta U, I'm going to use the value at um, 450.733 kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin times 600 minus 300. I would get 220. Point zero kilojoules per kilogram. I believe that's what I got. 0.733 times 300. Uh, let's say 219.9. But I guess 
219.9 kilojoules per kilogram. That is my U. Look how much faster and easier that was. And, I mean, usually it's less accurate, but this one actually looks, looks more accurate, looks closer to the property table values for that. So, now that we did part B, I, I don't know, maybe in the, uh, maybe in the um, homework I might make you do it for the homework. You will not have to do uh, this integral right here uh, on the test because we're going to just say it's good enough to use the constant specific heat at the average temperature um, as we're going from um, state one to state two. All right, so if you want internal energy, you can look at property tables, you could look at the integral, or you could say C V delta T gives me change in U. C V delta T gives me change in U.